All right. We are all hands on deck here, trying to get this motor put together. Obviously, we are not going to make outlaw. But, hopefully, everything goes well, and we will have a healthy motor for Beckley. Tires started showing up today, so we'll be mounting and balancing. Well, not balancing, but we mount mounting those tomorrow. Today, we work on this. What is up, Build It Kingdom? That little snippet you just saw was actually yesterday, Friday. Uh, the boys working on my motor, getting that thing put together. We got the head back from the machine shop. But again, like I said in the video, Friday morning, we're just putting the motor together. We are definitely not going to make outlaw. So, shakedown, not happening. So, we're going to put a motor that was hurt and is now fixed in my car. And then hope for the best, I guess. But, should be plus 30 horsepower. Whether that's going to be helpful on a tiny little track or not. I don't know. We're just rolling dice out here and hoping for the best, I guess. Uh, but yeah, so uh, tires started showing up because I had to order small tires. I don't didn't have tires small enough for what we were about to go do. So a couple hundred dollars in tires are starting to show up. So we're going to have to uh, mount and prep some tires here at some point. But more importantly, first off, we got our first channel sponsor or episode sponsor, whatever you want to call it. Let's call it episode sponsor. Brian Woodall. I will post his Facebook link, messenger thing, whatever, down below in the description. Sent me some of these uh, 3D printed race receiver holders. These are pretty neat. They uh, zip tie to your roll bar. Put your race receiver in there so you can, you know, hear. That way you're not, you know, fumbling for it. Uh, they come in different colors, as you can see. Um, I don't know how many different colors, but they do come in different colors. Uh, he sent me some for the AAA battery ones and for the rechargeable ones you can see they got a little bit different shape to them inside here if you look at them um, he is currently working on making them for the re receiver and the nitro v um i've seen these before i've never actually had any so now i have a couple to try um pretty cool neat little unit uh he sells them for 20 bucks a piece shipped so he's got some other stuff too he had like the little discs that you put under your uh hood pins to protect your paint he had some of those too so i don't know what else he has to offer but he's got the race receiver holders he's got those things to protect so hit brian up on facebook thank you brian for the uh for the race receiver holders these will definitely get used between my car and connor's car and uh i'll give you know a couple of the boys if they need them so thank you very much thanks for supporting the channel appreciate you uh, if you are not since we're talking about it if you are not subscribed you should definitely click that little subscribe button down below like and subscribe because that helps me it helps get the channel out to people and nah, honestly it's the only way i get paid is if people are watching so they need to see that you're watching i appreciate that thank you very much we're not making money here okay like there's money we've been monetized for a year 300 bucks okay so these youtubers you think we're making a bunch of money we're not making any money okay i was just able to actually buy Last week, they started coming in uh, upgrades. So like uh, microphones, stuff like that, to try to make the experience a little bit better for you guys. And I will move towards that as I figure out how to use that stuff because I'm not super tech savvy. But we will get there. Um, so yeah, hit up Brian for those things. We are moving forward with this. I have some stuff to do before we can put the new motor in. I did get a text late last night that the motor is ready, that I can go pick it up, but some cleaning i gotta set up a rack because i'm pretty sure this one is bent so i gotta get a rack in here i gotta set up a rack we gotta put a strut together i gotta unbolt some stuff from this motor that we're gonna need for the other motor there's just some stuff to do so stay tuned and i will uh, keep you informed as we move along yeah All right, so you just watched me tear this rack apart. Um, it appears to be good. Uh, nothing appears to be bent. I didn't, I got a little ahead of myself. I should have probably checked before starting to take this part, this rack apart. But everything looks to be straight. Um, I was worried that the internal shaft was bent because I thought I felt a hard spot. 
that was probably something else in the steering. Maybe the strut being bent or something was causing that hard spot. Because this thing, smooth, back and forth. You watched me push it in, pull it out a couple of times by hand without actually turning the, the uh, drive shaft. So that's good. Uh, I got to see if Donnie's got parts. Um, was Steering stops. So I got to see if Donnie's got set steering stops because I will just set that one up so it's ready to go in case something happens. But this one can go back in. So whew, win number one for today. Okay, keep moving forward. All right, we're getting this strut set up. Um, a lot of guys over the years have asked us, you know, how, how do we get camber? Uh, this is how. You slot these holes right here where the spindle mounts up. And then you can tip the spindle and that gives you your camber. Now, that being said, this is left front. So, driver's side front, bring the top hole out, bottom hole in. On that passenger side, on the on the right front, you would go the opposite way. You would take the top in and the bottom out. Because on the passenger side, you want to tip the top of the you want to tip the top of the front tire out. And on the driver's or on the sorry, the right the right front, you want to tip it in, right? That's how you get your camber. So hang on a second. As you can see here on the bottom, it is ovaled out more than I can get that to go in. Now I can tip the top out plenty, but if you wanted more, you would actually have to grind some off the back of the spindle right here on the bottom. Let me set this down. My bench is a mess right here. You have to grind some of this off. Obviously, don't take so much that it makes it weak, but you can take some material off of here because what it's doing is it's hitting the body right here. So you can take some material off and get it to tip in farther. Same thing goes for the right front, except you would take it off the top to get it to tip in further. So you see there's, there's a lot of material there, but be careful. You know, use your best judgment. Um, a lot of guys put way too much camber in your car. I can tell you right now that you don't have to take much off of here. And with ovaling this hole, you can get enough to do what you're trying to do. You shouldn't have to go crazy. Uh, they do make camber bolts. You get yourself a little bit more. But, I mean, most guys I see have it tipped way too far. Um, I got a fair amount of tip in my right front. You've seen it before. Uh, but, yeah. So that's how we get camber in these front wheel drives. One thing I did not mention. Um, you're, it helps to weld washers on. Uh, so like after you bolt this up, now you want to bolt it up because if you weld the washer on before you bolt it up, you might, be able, might not be able to get the bolt in. So grab a washer, bolt it up, tip it out where you want it, as far as you want it, and then weld a washer to it. And that's because if someone hits this, they can just push it in. So if you weld the washer to it, it stops it from being able to move if someone hits it. Food for thought. All right. Kurt and I have been fucking moving and I haven't been taking video. I'm not a good host. That's what I am, a host? Sure. Anyways, struts put together, spindles on it, bearings in it. Uh, yeah, that's where I left off in the video was doing that. So that's together. Okay, nice. new new top bearing. And then we mounted a couple of new tires over here. These little guys, 195.60s. I picked this tread pattern because I, I thought it looked really good. Good ribs for turning, good lugs for going forward. Those are the right fronts. Left fronts haven't showed up yet. And now, the motor's here. <sighs> I know it looks exactly the same as the other motor. We use the same valve cover. And it smells like Kurt shit his pants. <laughs> and then, 384 welded transmission. I know it's dirty. It was already in a race car. So, right now we are putting the tranny mounts on it from the other transmission. We got motor mounts. We had a bunch of accessories. We took off the other motor. Put on this motor, like the header. So, yeah, it looks exactly like the motor we took out. It is definitely not the motor we took out. No. After talking to Brent, um, it sounds like I was exaggerated with my 204 horsepower. That was an estimate. Um, one exactly like this was dynoed at 195. So we're thinking 195 horsepower, still 25 more than I had. It was one, probably more than 25 more than I had. The calculated was 103 on the dyno sheet. 203. Or 203. <laughs> it's been a long day. So we've raced with a lot less than what we've got here. We still haven't started this to make it run or anything. So it's together. We're about to put it in the cradle and put the cradle back in the car. We're a couple minutes away from doing that. So that is where we're at. We are moving forward kind of, sort of, rapidly. Yeah, sure. We're, we're doing something. <laughs>
Okay, it is in the car. Everything is hooked up, we think. The uh, ECM's in, as you can see. This is going to be the first test to see if it fires. Kurt's confident. He's no, confident. I'm, He's confident. Con I'm, I'm never confident when we get to this stuff, so. Oh, fuck. Here we go. Go ahead. Give it a second. You heard me say I don't like that noise. And then I ended the camera. We shut the car off. It was, I don't know if you can hear it on the camera. You could hear like a dull thunk clunking noise. It almost sounded like something in the top end. So we took the valve cover off. I should have pulled the camera out and unhooked the fuel injectors. And we just spun the motor over and visually looked at it. And it was the brand new timing chain tensioner. We looked down in there and we could see that guide that sits on that just yeah, going like more. this bouncing every time we turn the motor over clunk 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 and it it was activated it was sprung so it's just maybe the spring and it's broken or something i don't know but that was a new one for me and kurt we'd never seen that before I've never seen that so we I put the tensioner off my motor that i took out in here and it seems to be better we're gonna get this thing back together we're gonna fire it up again take two here we go
for a few minutes now. The fans did finally kick on. I don't think we had enough water in it for it to trigger the temp sensor. We got some water in it now though. Man. What's up, y'all? Well, yesterday we got it, the motor in, got it fired up. We found a uh, bad timing chain tensioner. So that was fun. Had to take the valve cover off and swap that out. And that was brand new. So we ended up taking the one out of the old motor, throwing it in the new motor. Now it runs good. We ran it up to temperature, revved it up a few times. Everything there appears to be good. So uh, right now I just hung that new strut in there. I gotta tighten that up. We gotta put we gotta put all the drivetrain to the wheels back together. So axles, brakes, all that good stuff, steering, hook all that stuff back up. So gotta get her all get her back down on all fours. And then I'm gonna run it up to temp again. Still gotta bleed the clutch. You know, a couple little things, but that's what we're working on today. Here we go. All right, she's back on all four. And it looks funny with little tiny tires on it. Or at least I think it looks funny with little tiny tires on it. <laughs> and the body on this thing is just beat up. Look how tiny the tire looks in the wheel well, because we're used to having big ass tires. We got these little itty bitty tires on there now. I think it looks funny, <laughs> but whatever. That's what we got to have for this track. So uh, I'm going to fire this thing up again and, uh, Bring it up to temperature for a second time. And then uh, after we get it up to temp this time, I'm gonna change the oil, put a fresh, fresh fill of certified 1030 synthetic blend, new oil filter, and then she should be good to go. Other than that, we got a couple small things to tinker with, but uh, we should be pretty much ready to go. So let's fire it up. Battery on, switch on, power. All right, let's make sure this is a neutral. It's a neutral, we don't wanna drive into the wall. Here we go. So just a quick update to uh, end this video because tomorrow is Tuesday and I upload on Tuesdays, okay? So I'm currently fighting a fan issue. 
Um, the fan never came back. So unfortunately we are chasing that. It's looking like it's some type of wiring or bad relay or something. Don's on his way here because he's way better at that stuff than I am. Um, so we're gonna figure that out. I'm over here grinding tires. Grinder uh, down there. The left tires finally showed up. So uh, grinding those, getting prepped, getting ready. Uh, I've warmed the motor up a couple times now. So that should be good. I will change the oil. After I get the fan fixed, I'm going to run up the temp one more time and then I'll change the oil. So uh, next time you see us, we should be headed to Beckley down to the compact clash. We are going to have cobalt crew merch in hand with us. Kurt's going to pick it up tomorrow from Brian. Um, so yeah, hit us up at the trailer. If you want that stuff, um, I'll have build it kingdom stickers. Stop by, grab a sticker. Those are free. Um, yeah. So come see us. Say hi. Uh, we're, we're not going down Thursday, so we're going to leave early Friday morning. We'll get down there for, uh, for hot laps and qualifying and everything for Friday night. So, uh, I will, we'll, we'll see you there. Me and Kurt.